Hello friends, if you had an increase or decrease in your appetite and wondered what in the world is going on, let's get to the bottom of it and see if we can figure that out. As a reminder, this is not personal medical advice, only educational content. Changes in appetite can be for many causes, and you may be surprised by all the things that affect your body's biological symptoms for regulating appetite. The most direct may be prescribed medications, so you want to think about all these things that you can be on that could be decreasing your appetite. For example, things like stimulants, specifically Adderall, Ritalin, which you might be on for ADHD, Topiramate, also called Topamax, which is technically an anti-seizure medicine, but you can take this for headaches as well as weight loss, Wellbutrin or Bupropion, which people take for depression, but also it has a nice side effect of decreasing weight. It works on the neurotransmitter of norepinephrine. In addition, there are prescribed medications for weight loss, such as the GLP-1 receptor agonists, which are very popular and function by, in part, suppressing appetite. An older weight loss medication is called Phentramine, and this one acts a little bit more like a stimulant, but it also does decrease appetite. For increased appetite, many medications do this, but here's a couple of them. Corticosteroids, just prednisone, for example, if you have some rheumatological condition, or autoimmune condition, you might be on this. And you may notice that your appetite is through the roof. Many psychiatric medications, such as antipsychotics like olanzapine, quetiapine, and antidepressant medications specifically, like many SSRIs and amitriptyline, which is called a tricyclic antidepressant, as well as remeron, also known as mirtazapine, and then insulin itself, which you take if you have more advanced diabetes type 2, also can result in increased appetite. And that's why for diabetes, one of the goals is to decrease the amount of insulin you need because otherwise you have this downward spiral where you're taking insulin for the condition, but it's making you gain weight. And that's no good. In addition, we don't want to discount infections like HIV AIDS decreases appetite or even the flu or many respiratory conditions temporarily. You're going to have less appetite because that's a side effect of the immune system's inflammatory molecules that are functioning to fight the infection, but as a side effect, decrease your appetite. Tuberculosis often has weight loss as a first presenting symptom, as well as hepatitis, which also includes nausea and weight loss. There's many others, but these are just some of the most common. In addition, endocrinology can be a part of what's going on. So you want to think about your overactive thyroid, hyperthyroidism, where your metabolic rate is too high. That's going to decrease your appetite. And then hypothyroidism, where your metabolic rate is too low, you're going to have a higher appetite. Diabetes, as mentioned, is not going to necessarily have one or the other, but you're going to have fluctuations in appetite and hormone dysregulation with accompanying changes in blood sugar. In addition, there's something called Cushing syndrome, which is a syndrome of increased cortisol. When increased cortisol happens, you have higher appetite. So for example, if you have a sleepless night, the next day, you're going to be more likely to eat more calories because of the higher levels of the stress hormone resulting in higher appetite. Appetite's a very complicated biological system. Now, in addition, you can think of some psychiatric causes like a manic episode. If you have bipolar disorder, sometimes people will be eating more than they normally do because they're more hyperactive. They might even, in extreme mania, have something that looks like a binge episode, but oftentimes the mania causes people to be quite distracted and focused on various tasks and therefore they may forget to eat. In addition, there are certain drugs of abuse like cannabis and stimulants, cocaine, methamphetamine, which as a side effect change appetite. Cannabis famously increases your appetite, gives you the munchies, and cocaine and methamphetamine decrease your appetite. Something like LSD probably doesn't change appetite much and when people consume excess alcohol, they often eat out of impulsivity rather than increased appetite. In addition, when somebody's in a major depressive episode, typically they're going to have lower appetite. Some people do have a, a typical presentation where they have a heightened appetite and emotional eating, but typically people lose their appetite. Similarly, if you are facing a acute stressor, something called adjustment disorder, in which you may have less than a full major depressive episode, but appetite can definitely be decreased in this situation as well. Now, getting into the more intricate psychiatric conditions, if you have something like a delusional disorder, you might even not be eating because of a delusion that food is poison. So this is obviously very uncommon, but psychosis is out there and many of the most vulnerable members of our human family are struggling with psychosis. So here's an example where cognition 
and appetite could be interacting over a chronic period. Also, anorexia nervosa is a condition in which people have a irrational fear of gaining weight and often do have dangerously low weights. But in this case, the appetite is going to be fluctuating because there's going to be times when somebody is basically starving themselves that they're going to have a very high appetite. And then there's going to be a fluctuating trajectory of appetite over time because the hormonal systems are going to compensate for the weight loss and new set points are going to be established. And there's no one consistent change in appetite, but you're going to see various fluctuations. In addition, rumination disorder is a condition where people have repeated regurgitation and rechewing of food. And again, there's no characteristic pattern per se, but in this condition, you might see changes initially high appetite, then low appetite, or blunted appetite, and then rebound increased appetite with these behavioral changes. In addition, there's binge eating disorder, which has to happen at least once a week technically to be diagnosed. And here again, somebody might be skipping breakfast, skipping lunch, and then having a binge episode in the evening. So their appetite might be very high during the day, but they might go long periods of time with low appetite after the binge. So you're going to have fluctuating levels. In addition, bulimia is binge eating disorder plus purging, where somebody's having cycles of purging up food after a binge. And again, here, there's going to be cyclical changes in appetite in response to some of these behaviors. And people here typically have normal or above average weight as opposed to anorexia, which is low weight. In addition, there's something called ARFID, avoided, avoidant restrictive food intake disorder. And here, a lack of interest in eating arises because of both a cognitive and emotional reaction to the sensitivity of the food's texture, appearance, color, or temperature, or other sensory characteristics. And so here, appetite is going to be fluctuating depending on how one's cognitions and emotions and relationship to food changes. And now we're getting into more complex examples. And sometimes people are afraid of choking as a result of eating. So there's also a category of eating disorders called other specified feeding or eating disorder or OSFED. Now, this includes things like anorexia nervosa, where weight is actually not low, but it has a lot of the other characteristics of anorexia, or bulimia, where the person engages in these behaviors not at the level required or the frequency required, but yet there's still something that's dysfunctional about the eating behaviors. And similarly for binge eating disorder, where the frequency is not weekly, but there's still something pathological and dysfunctional. Or you can have somebody who purges, but doesn't have binge eating, so technically, they don't meet the criteria for bulimia, where you need both of those together. And in all of these conditions, you're going to see fluctuating levels of appetite and complex interactions between cognition, emotion, and behavior in appetite regulation, such as night eating syndrome, where somebody will typically have morning anorexia or morning low appetite, and then consume a large percentage of their categories after the sun goes down, either waking after sleeping or eating late into the night. They may not meet the criteria for binge eating disorder. So there's a number of more complicated examples of situations in which appetite can be dysregulated and it's not as simple as oh i just missed a meal or oh my metabolism is really high so i really hope this has helped you get to the bottom of some of these changes you or a loved one may be experiencing if you've enjoyed this let me know so i can make more videos like this if you want to hear of any particular topics make some suggestions in the comments and if you want to join my free newsletter check out medicalwisdom.org thanks so much